Hi everybody, welcome back to Revit API plus Python series. In the previous video I've shown you all the software that we need to install to prepare our development environment. And in this video I'll show you how to set up Revit API autocomplete for PyCharm. Before we continue, first of all, I want to warn you that I have migrated to my new laptop since the last video and it has Windows 11 installed. So generally, UI looks different, but everything should function the same. And I even use the same installer as you run on Windows 10. And secondly, I have realized that I was always using regular Python 2.7 in my PyCharm and not Iron Python, as I have mentioned in the previous video. So before we continue, let's install Python 2.7. So to install it, open Google and type Python 2.7. Then look for official Python website and open it. In here, scroll down to download section and choose this MCI installer. Download it anywhere on your computer and run it. In here, there is nothing special, just follow the installer. And now, we should have Python 2.7 installed in our computer. So, let's open our PyCharm and create a new project for our future extension. In here, we need to choose a location where it will store our future extension. I'll store all my PyCharm projects in Documents folder. Then type your future extension name. I'll call mine EF Tutorials. And we need to set up a new virtual environment. By default, it uses the same path of the project, but I find it much better to store in another location. I placed mine in App Data Roaming folder, and I will call it Revit API. Here in Base Interpreter, choose Python 2.7. If you don't have it here, then you can click on these three dots on the right, and you can find your py executable file. Usually, it's on the C drive or in the program files. You just have to search for it. Depends on where you installed it. A virtual environment is a tool that helps us keep dependencies for different projects separately from each other by creating an isolated instance of Python environment. Think of it as a container with Python engine where you can put all required packages specific for each project. And you can create as many containers as you want. Luckily, PyCharm has a neat user interface to manage it, so it's very beginner friendly. Let's create our container and add Revit API autocomplete to it. So this will create a project and open welcome file. We can run it and see hello world output in the console. We can also reconfigure our interpreter in Open Project anytime. Go to File, Settings, then click on Project with its name and select Python Interpreters. That's our current virtual environment. If you click on this cog icon, you can click on Show All. We can create a new one and it will ask Location and Base Interpreter same as before. I can create a second one and call it Revit API 2. Here is the new one. I don't really need it, so I'll delete it. And these are the packages within our virtual environment. You can install more by clicking on plus icon and you can write here a name and install it. We don't need to install any right now, so we can close it. And we are done here. Let's clean this up and finally start setting up autocomplete. Now we need to download some files. Open Google and type Revit API stops. Then look for git repo from gtelerico. Download this whole repo as a zip file. Then open the downloaded file and extract it somewhere. Now we need to open release folder inside of it. And then we copy stabs.min folder and place it somewhere on our machine. I will go to app data where my virtual environment is located, and then I will paste it in my Revit API event. While you're in this folder, don't forget to copy the path where you have placed it. Now let's go back to PyCharm. We need to open our Python interpreter menu, click on File, Settings, Project, Python Interpreter. Then click on show all. In here, select your environment and we need to show paths for the selected interpreter. These are the paths where Python is looking for packages and other things. Click on this plus icon to add a new path and paste the path that we just copied before we placed our stops. Now let's see if it works. Sometimes you need to give it some time to read all the content for the first time. Look how many different classes it offers me when I need a filtered element collector. So it's working. I think we're done here. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to create your PyRevit extension and how to host it on GitHub if you want to share it with somebody. If you want to support my channel and development of EFTools extension, I have a Patreon page. Link will be in the description of this video. My name is Eric Fritz and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.